Good evening. We have a quorum at 630. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Kathy Song. Hi, this is Kathy Song. Great to see you, all of you. What can we do for you? Yeah, actually, I don't know where I supposed to start to maybe my direction to open to my uh, office, real estate office in Headley. Okay. Your phone, phone number for, we should get on the phone with Carnival. Ami, you're not muted in case you I thought you were. I took care of that. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, and then maybe I was, you know, all of the my progress was wrong direction. So I actually, you know, try to um, the apply for the new business certification ahead. Something it is messed it up, but uh, one one three to one one three Russell Street in Hadley. That is a belong to my brother, younger brother, who already runs the restaurant there. And then I just, uh, you know, I thought very simple to use uh, like a small room, which is he never used it, like abandoned room. They had a small room, so I could use it as office. So I, you know, that's, I was just trying to progress and then something is going on. So, and then uh, town of Headley did told me I needed to start from this moment to, um, approve by all of you guys I can run my you know office with the same building with my brothers you know like a restaurant because it um no one is gonna stay there it's like a you know remote office realtor job usually we need only a laptop we don't use this office space but uh, if I am going to hang the, my um roof sign I needed to have a small office to prove I am actually, you know, physically have an office. So that's, I actually start from the bring to my business there. And then maybe I made some mistake of the progressing. So I, you know, I need you guys help to, um, yeah, move forward. Okay. So you just want, you want to put your, re a, a, your real estate office in the existing building across from the most holy, the, across from the courthouse, basically. Yeah. Yes. You, and you want to use, you just want to put a sign up above on, on your, on the building there? Uh, they, uh, my brother's restaurant uh, building is like a ranch, ranch building. It is address used to be, it's really old building address is 112113 Russell Street. So literally 111 area has old, old, like a roof sign that was uh, used to be singing, singing karaoke room, something like that sign was there, but that is abandoned. They never use it as a singing room. So I actually tried to replace that uh, singing karaoke sign to my uh, premier realtor group sign. So yeah, that's actually beginning of the, my job, but it's something messed up this progress. So I need the permit for that on my sign. And then I can use uh, that uh, small room behind. Um, yeah, can you see the blue, like a, a really bright blue with the rainbow sign that is gonna be replaced the same size with the Kohang and Korean market sign. So that's my plan for the, you know, uh, my office is going to use it as a behind of the building, not front it is, uh, front of the building, but I can just use it as my sign, replace with a, that a blue sign. So there'll be less signage, you're reducing the overall size of the signs on the building. That's correct. So uh, same, um, what was the same Rupu, uh, a sign company, Sunrise Inc. is made of Koya and Korean market sign. And he already measured all the signs. So exactly the same size. So right now blue sign is a lot bigger than the others. So I want to match with um, you know, the other two sign which is my brother's restaurant sign with my, you know, realtor sign. So, so I, you know, yeah, it's not going to be bigger than, you know, whatever already hang there. Okay. Um, so let me see if I can make this work. 
So the uh, <clears throat> I, I've had multiple email conversations with Kathy. So here's the what the sign is going to look like. Um, this is the one that's going to go on the building and then a, a two foot by four foot is going to go up here on, on the top of the street sign. Yes, correct. And I think we've determined how big do we determine the street sign was? Uh, street sign is a four by two feet. Okay, yours is four by two, but how big is the one that is there now? Uh, I think I gave you that information. I, but I think you did. I can only look for so many things at once. Yeah, um, I it, think, you know, it was just, uh, let me, let me find it. Okay, hold on. Looks like four by six would be mine. Yeah, I think it, it, it's a four by six, but I, I am just checking it right now. Yeah, it's a four by six. Okay, four by six. So that's 24 square feet. So by adding uh, an additional eight square feet to a 24 square foot sign, you're well within the limits. So, so should I? The two by four foot sign is the roadside sign. Is that the same size as the building too, or is that different? I think it's a little bigger on the building, isn't it? You mean building sign, like a roof sign? The one on the roof, right? Yeah, on on the roof, it's gonna be ten by two feet, so it's a little bigger than definitely. Ten, it ten be by ten. Is it is it is going to be ten by two foot or it is ten by two foot? That's what the blue one is, right? The blue yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one. The blue blue one replaced to blue one. And you're gonna replace it to match your brother's yes. sign, so it will yes. it will be probably less than ten feet, right? Yeah. So you I don't go, yeah, I will stay with the same size with my brother's sign because it, when he hangs a sign, he already approved by the, you know, head town of Headley. So I want to just matching, I mean, look better or so. So I want to match it with his sign for the roof. Do you know how big the roof sign is going to be? That's actually really uh, flexible. So he actually Sunrise Inc, uh, like a sign company, Give me the estimate is 120 times 24. That might be uh, not fit. <laughs> oh, that's, but, you know, yeah, yeah, that's two foot by 10 foot. So that's the size of the blue sign. Yeah. So I think, you know, we can just make it smaller with that because, you know, I didn't actually um, move forward to actually make the sign. I have a design, I have a measurement. So if you uh, tell me about, you know, you, I needed to match with my brother's next, to, next door sign, definitely I will do it. So, you know, design is there, but it's, they are actually didn't make it yet. So I can just be flexible with the size. Just so, you, you know, you can tell me what size, what size is gonna be okay with me. Well, if it's the same size as the ex existing building sign, that's what your goal to do, then, you know, I mean, no, Jim, I think she wants to make that sign smaller. Well, like, she, she, she wants to make it the same size as the other two signs. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be smaller than, than the 20 square feet that the existing one is. Right, right. You are right. But Bill is probably looking for a number. So when he writes up that we're going to approve of it. Uh, Do you have the street side image again, Bill? Because we could probably speculate on the dimensions just proportionally. Well, if, if, I mean, if it's the same size as the existing size, it looks like two feet is consistent to be across. Right, and probably six or... I'm gonna say it's seven. probably somewhere around six foot. Yeah. Four to six, yeah, I, I doubt it's four feet. It's probably closer to six, two by five, two by six. So there's the street sign. Uh, this, yeah, the oh, building sign, Bill. Oh, the building the sign. On the building, sorry. You were supposed to know what I meant, not what I said, Bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that looks like about, it, it looks like a th three to one proportion. So it's probably two by six. Yeah, two. I, that's about what I would guess. Okay. It, it could be two by seven. Yeah, I don't want to say two by, I don't want to make it, I don't want to give a, an exact number because if we say that and it ends up being smaller than the existing, it's going to look, it's not what she wants. 
Right. If we just say the same size as same the existing size. signs, right? I mean, we know it's less than 20 square feet by a long shot. Yeah. So it's going to be well, well in compliance. And um, are they lit at night? Are there lights, um, Kathy? Yeah. So it, they had a light system. So if I am available to put the light on it, definitely I want to try. Yeah. There, as long as it's external illumination. Which means lines on the sign. It doesn't shine through it. Okay. Yeah. I think those are all externally illuminated. Those are not internal signs. Yeah. I, I think she's fine. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval and to approve the signage uh, building to be the same size as the others that exist and the street sign uh, not to exceed two by four feet. Okay. Okay. That's the I motion. Second. I would second motion. that. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? And hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. I will get this out to the building inspector and you can move forward. You can go to see him tomorrow. You can go to your, your, your next part of the process of approval, which yeah. would probably be the, the building inspector, right? So, and uh, Kathy has signed the uh, acknowledgement that uh, site plan, waiver of site plan approval does not excuse working with everyone else. Right. Your name of your business is Premier Realty, Kathy? Yeah, Premier Realty Group. Okay, group. Okay, I just wanna, I just, that's fine. All right, okay, good luck. Good luck. Thank you, thank you so much. So Mr. I'm Dwyer, going to make the assumption that Valerie Hood and Alexi Levine are here together. Yes, <clears throat> we are. Um, we're here because we uh, have an accepted offer on uh, 231 Russell Street, which is currently 5050 Fitness. And uh, Valerie and I own the massage school in East Hampton, and we're going to move it to Hadley, or we'd like to move it to Hadley. Um, so uh, one of the stipulations of our purchase is that our planned use would be approved by the town. So uh, we wanted to kind of get that process started and just run it by you and introduce our project. And uh, it, hopefully you guys will tell us what the next step in the process would be and, and if it sounds you know, good to you or. So that's the old 50, 50, 50, 50 fitness building? Yeah. And you're gonna put in what you're gonna put in there? We own a, it's a called the massage school and that's what it is we train people to be massage therapists we're licensed by the state um, i'm actually on the state board of massage therapy and i'm a licensed uh, physical therapist also and um, we've been operating in it, we started in amherst in 2001 and then we moved to east hampton we bought the uh, old memorial town hall in east hampton in 2005 and um, this building came on the market and it's just perfect for our school. It's got lots of parking in back. Uh, it is, uh, I think they call it oiled gravel, the parking. And we actually don't have to renovate at all to put our school in there. Uh, we are exploring the idea of expanding the parking. It's, it's kind of wooded in the back of the lot and it fronts on Nash Hill Road, I think it's called. And um, so we are going to be looking into seeing if we can clear that and add more gravel parking lot. Okay. The, uh, I mean, if you're just going to move in, if you move into the existing building with no changes, all we want to do is see what the sign will look like. Okay. If you're going to be expanding the parking down the road, we would want to see what your parking plans are um, and stuff like that on Nashville Road. Now realizing Nashville Road may or may not be in the business district. And if it isn't, um, I'm not sure if you can access your rear parking lot to Nashua Road. I, I, yeah. Those are, it's a gray area there. I'm not really sure if, if Nashua is or is not in the business zone. Yeah. I'm going to take a look at the uh, zoning map if I can. How do you run a school? Do, do you have classes every day how many students come to class if not how is it run 
What's the traffic going to be? Uh, we have classes three days a week, two or three days a week, and um, clinic, student clinic, two or three days a week where people come to get massages from the students. Uh -huh. And um, there's usually anywhere from 15 to 30 people. Uh -huh. and the hours of operation? Um, it would be for classes, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, probably 6.30, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And for clinic would probably be Wednesdays and Fridays from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And uh, Sundays, uh, probably for like noon to four o'clock. It's sort of the same hours as you would typically find at a yoga or fitness studio, like a Pilates place. Uh -huh. So I am going to just uh, pull up the uh, uh, zoning map overlay to the tax. And um, okay, so this is presently uh, 231 Russell. So I'm going to bring this up. Uh, you do not have access to Nashua Road from the business uh, district. So it looks like we could expand the parking a lot and still leave some trees up between the parking and the road, the way it's currently configured. Uh, so yes, this is the parcel here, um, 231 Russell Street. The, this is the zone line. Uh, the parcel does go to Nashua Road uh, there is a uh, case law in Massachusetts that you cannot access a more intensive use through a less intensive use. So you cannot have a driveway. Uh, you, you can't access the business portion of this lot from Nashua Road. I don't think it's necessary. Um, apparently there's an easement. Uh, there's like a common road. In, there's a, it's almost like a little group of buildings like Wildwood uh, barbecue restaurant is on the eastern part of that and we'd be on the western part and there's an easement where people can exit our parking and come out by Wildwood so there could be a traffic flow without having to use Nash Hill. Yeah there is an easement line shown here and uh, I know Mr. Iser has previously mentioned that uh, he sometimes has to shoo 50-50 customers out of his parking lot but it sounds like you will not have that kind of an overflow. If you, there's, there, I'm, I'm surprised because there, there's so much existing parking right now. There's supposedly 50 spots. Yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got a large enough parcel so that if you want to expand your parking, you have more than enough room and you can still stay access on Route 9. So, you know, I don't see why you'd want to access on Nashua, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, we, we don't need to do that. So, anyways. Um, we want to see what your sign, sign, sign or signs look like. Um, as far as anything else, the, the parcel has gone through site plan approval previously. Um, so if you're, provide, if you're doing no exterior alterations and until you decide to expand the parking lot, if, if you ever do, um, you could just move in whenever, um, maybe we, basically the planning board sees no issues with what you want to do. Fantastic. We're really looking forward to moving our school here. I'll make a motion to waive site plan, further site plan approval with no exterior alterations. Okay. So What's the name of your business again? The Massage School. It's, uh, I'm actually at the location in Boston right now. The, our, our we have a banner here in Boston for a sign. We might do a banner, a vertical banner. It's, it's got the same kind of lettering behind us with some more white and orange tones and the phone number. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, exterior illumination, just how you're going to stay within 64 square feet, building and roadside. I mean, if you use the existing, um, I think the existing sign base is still there, if I'm correct. They didn't remove that. No, it's, it's and, still there, I think. So, um, okay, so we got a, a motion to wave site wave plan, site approval. plan approval for the Maasai School at 231 Russell Street, pending sign approval. Second. Motion a second. A second, yeah. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so okay. Alexi, I'm going to send you a form for your signature. Uh, we This is what we were talking about with Kathy Song earlier, that uh, just an acknowledgement that we're only one step in the process and uh, you don't get a, a get a jail free card just by coming here. Yeah, <laughs> sure, thanks. Well, you... What is the next step then? Well, it depends on what you are going to do, uh, I would imagine. Um, you may need to uh, see the building inspector. If you are going to expand your parking, you may need to see the conservation commission. Um, it really uh, depends on what you're doing, I, yeah. I guess. So, so, some businesses trigger board of health reviews. Um, you know, when you go to see the building inspector after this, uh, when you, or when you do go to see the building inspector, he can give you usually much better direction on what you might need um, for your for various other uh, boards of other approvals. All right. Yeah, I think we'll need a fire inspection too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank board you. of Health Thanks. might have something to say. Depend. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. But you, you have no further zoning issues. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, so when we get a sign going, we just uh, appear before you guys again, right? That's yep. correct. Yep. Just informally like this. If okay. you can get the sign to us prior to our meeting, it's a big help too. Okay. Okay. Just send it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Mr. Next, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, what I have is uh, just someone I did identified as iPhone. I uh, don't know if you had wanted to talk to the planning board. Is that me? Yeah, I yes. just see you as uh, iPhone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, my, Michael S. was the one who responded to me. Okay. Uh, hello, Jim Maximowski. Hello, planning board. Uh, my name is Diane Kirby. Oh, okay. Um, I missed you last uh, meeting, I apologize. Um, I spoke a little bit briefly to uh, Jim about my plans for opening a uh, all electric scooter and motorcycle sales business on Route 9 in Hadley. And I was uh, just reaching out to see about getting uh, a business permit and um, some information about the signage because I'm going to be renting the, uh, the old Rockies uh, Ace Hardware building uh, off to the right, the small section. It's a 10,000 square foot building. I'm renting 4,000 square feet. Um, they are in the process of paving, uh, not paving, but um, doing a lot of work to the driveway. Um, but the thing is, is I understand the sign is gonna be coming down because Route 9 is going to be widened. Um, but I still would like to put a sign up in the interim until that time happens, and then we can take the sign back down. The sign for Rockies has three different tiers, all of which are empty, or um, there's no writing on some of them. And it is an internally lit sign, and there is electricity to the sign, but I am not planning to internally light my sign. We are working on uh, some kind of uh, lighting mechanism that we could put, that we could attach to the posts so that I can light the sign from the uh, outside. Um, not from the ground, but from the outside of the sign. Uh, I also talked to Jim about the possibility of putting a dumpster behind the building, not in front of the building. And he said that that's something that we could talk about tonight as well. So there's three different things. 
uh, am, do I qualify in that zoning to have the motorcycle and scooter business there? Uh, the signage right now, the existing sign that I'd like to use that's already there is a three by eight. Um, my sign people said that they can use the existing framework that's already there. And if the road gets widened, we can take the sign down and then the dumpster. So those are the three issues that we need to talk about tonight, I suppose, unless you can think of anything else. As, as far as the sales of the vehicles, the, motor, the uh, electric bikes, um, that is a lot of permitted use in that zone, as far as I can tell. Okay. So um, what, kind of, what kind of a motor dealer license do you have, or do you not need a motor vehicle dealer license? Well, the majority of the scooters that I'm selling, even if they look like motorcycles, um, they don't even have to be registered or insured to be ridden on the road because they all go about 37 miles an hour or less. So as far as I know, I mean, with the state, after talking to U.S. Customs, because all of these machines are coming direct from China. So after talking with U.S. Customs, the EPA, uh, the state of Massachusetts, re you know, regarding rules and regulations, registrations and everything of scooters and motorcycles. Um, nobody ever said that I needed a special license or anything to sell motorcycles and uh, uh, scooters any more than if I was selling bicycles or um, pets for that matter. I mean, nobody's ever addressed that to me before. And I've talked to just about everybody about anything that I would need to talk about, you know, about the business and nobody's ever mentioned anything. So I think I'm free and clear at this point regarding that. Um, I would suggest you perhaps touch base with uh, Jennifer at the um, town administrator's office. She's the board of, uh, she's the licensing coordinator for the town. Um, we do have a limitation on class one uh, motor vehicle dealers not being side by side. There's a separation. And I, I just don't know if you even trigger that. Uh, Jennifer would probably be able to uh, figure that out with you. Okay. So what does that mean if, if, if I'm too close to another dealership i mean i, be, I believe the I, don't, I forget exactly what the separation is but two, the super dealership is pretty close to that two more two miles apart yeah um but, well, well on one side i've got the you got subaru right up the road right well they're quite a ways up the road but on one side i've got the harbor freight and then i've got the chinese school um what is the other thing there the window works and then i've got Michael's Crafts and, and that on that side where there's no car dealerships. And then on the other side, there is uh, a car dip. Uh, Subaru is right there in between. You're, you're, yeah. you're within, two, you're within two miles of the Subaru dealership. Steve I Lewis. don't, I don't think you need a class one motor vehicle license to sell electric scooters. Um, but Bill's right. Check with the town licensing coordinator to be sure of that. So does that mean if I am with within a shorter distance, then there's no chance that I can have a location there? Correct. That basically is what it means by the word of the law, but that was not the intent. The intent of the law was to prevent automobile, class one automobile dealerships from being within too close to each other. Being that you're selling electric scooters, you're, that was something that when the law was draft when the zoning bylaw was drafted um to be honest with you those things didn't even exist yeah i mean there's a big difference between my business and a car dealership and the first thing is a, a car dealership you would test drive the vehicles you oh, can't okay. so we can't resolve that for you the bylaw right. says no class one motor vehicle dealership shall be permitted within 2.5 miles of an existing class one motor vehicle dealership Okay, so, so she has she has the list of the criteria that would make you a class. I, I hope she either has that list or knows where you can get it. Yes. But I mean, when you say class one, does that mean that there's also a class two and a class three? That's correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. class, class two is used and class three, I think, is uh, junkyards. Yeah, 
Correct. Thank so, you. um, so it, it's just something you you may well not even be you you may not be you know, a class one dealership, but uh, you are you are selling new motorized vehicles. So I'm I'm just encouraging you to check that for your own sake. Uh, okay. But uh, I think we can, you know, we we can vote to uh, give you an approval, um, subject to your finding out. But we okay. can't we can't waive the uh, right the requirement. Okay. So if it is so, then it's basically up to her right now. So if she says that I would qualify to be located there. Um, then I can at that time get my licensing and my my permits to open. You, if she said I'm okay. Uh, yes, and then you will also need to deal with um, the building inspector for any changes you're going to make. Right. Um, well, I'm not going to have a sign on the building, and I'm not going to do anything inside the building that I thought I was going to do because I found that it really doesn't need anything. So the only thing that we're doing is we're replacing external doors, mostly for security purposes. So that's really the only thing that we're going to be doing to the building. So the actual sign permit comes, the, the per permit to go up there and start bolting a new sign on comes from the building inspector. Okay. And depending on the, the extent of your door changes and the like that may require building permits as well we we don't know okay so he's going to oversee the whole job then the, uh, everything it takes to move in so um what about the dumpster am i okay to have a small probably one of the smallest dumpsters yeah. in the back I, I honestly don't know where the idea came from with rocky mr rocco that only one dumpster is permitted per business because the malls have multiple dumpsters and seeing that the dumps are gonna be behind the building, I mean, I don't know where he got the idea that only one dumpster per parcel is permitted. Maybe a long time ago, that was something that was an issue. I mean, the building was built in 1975 so who knows, you know, what rules were a long time ago versus now. I don't know. Um, he just told me to check with you on that because he was I, I concerned. Mean, I, I, I don't see a problem with a dumpster. Okay. I'm not even aware of anything that says you can't do that. Okay. All right. So tomorrow I will see the town administrator. Is that correct? Well, yes. the town administrator's office. You're, uh, Jennifer. Jennifer is the person you want to talk to. She'll, okay. she'll probably answer the phone. Just ask for Jennifer. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for all the information. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so no, don't uh, run away so quick. I'm not so, leaving. Okay. A couple of things. I would like you to send an email to planning at hadleyma.org. Um, and I will send you the, uh, the fact sheet that tells you what, we are approving and what we are not approving. Okay. And you'll just have to sign that and get it back to us. Okay. So I'll make a motion to waive uh, further site plan approval for a change of use to all electric scooter motorcycle sales, approve a three by eight sign with external illumination. No, and not, not, in, not externally. Well, external. you're correct. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, okay to install a dumpster behind the building. Okay, wonderful. So I understand that uh, Tim Nyhart is no longer the building inspector in That's Hadley. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to see somebody new for the first time then. Okay. What's the building inspector's name now? Tom Quinlan. Tom Quinlan, okay. You have to excuse me, I'm a South Hadley resident, so I'm kind of coming back into Hadley now. So um uh, some things have changed and there's some new faces. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm re-educating myself here. So um, are we all set then? Do you have any other questions? No, for me? Yeah, we, we, well, we're not quite set yet. Okay. Um, 
we're putting do, together a motion and then we will vote on it. I we actually will. do have a question though. Well, um, me, okay. Where the, where, where, where the rocky sign is, there's a big oval of grass. It's huge. And would I be allowed, if everything works out okay with the Subaru dealer and, and I'm okay to open at the Rockies location, am I allowed to uh, put the motorcycles and the scooters on the grass to display roadside during business hours and then bring them in at the end of business hours? Am I allowed to do that? As long as you're not within 50 feet of the, uh, probably not. Now that I think about it, that's that's that would be within a fifty foot front yard setback. Oh, that would be like a twenty foot set yard setback. Twenty, yeah, yeah it'd be like 20, 25 feet off the street. Yeah, you need to be over. You need we would we would want you to be over fifty feet. You could put some build some motorcycles for display or bikes for display next to your building, but you can't put them right on the road anymore. Correct. Because like the Subaru dealer has cars right up against the sidewalk. Yeah. And then we're, we're, we're trying to stop. He used to have more than we but we've had them, some of those removed. Mm. Okay. So that's, um, that's a new rule kind of that you yes. can't have anything near the uh, sidewalk. No. The Subaru uh, dealership, there's a couple of uh, things that go on. Number one, uh, the existing, it was 30, it's 35 feet back. Uh, it's not right on top of the road, but the mm. one where Rao's co coffee was, uh, that was kind of slipped in, and we have not given that approval. So I see. he's taking them off of there. I see. Um, now, when do you think that you're going to widen the road? Oh, that is state. out of our hands. That oh. is a state highway. Mass Department of Transportation will do it when they do it. I see. I so it's up in the air. We don't know. It'll probably be at the least opportune time. Yeah. Their uh, original <laughs> goal, their goal two and a half years, their, their goal two and a half years ago was to start in the summer, sometime in 2022. But the way they're moving forward with everything else and because of the pandemic and a whole bunch of other stuff, we have no idea when they're going to start. I see. Okay. Well, that sign is going to end up coming down anyway. I'm sure of it. And uh, I don't know if there is, is Rocky's grandfather to put that sign back up that location. No, no? It's, been, it's been, it's been out of use for two years. They've lost their grandfathering. Okay. Uh, Rocco will be interested to know that I'll explain that to him then. Okay. Um, that's all for me. I'm all set. Thank you very much. Okay. Wait a minute. So, Mr. Dwyer has a motion to weigh the site plan approval. I'm just going to add to your motion, Bill, subject to not require a class one motor vehicle license. Okay. Just for the, just to cover the base. That's the motion. We have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? Should we say who's who's responsible for determining the, the caveat, you know, the, whether it's required or not, because right now I have a feeling she's looking to hang it on Jennifer. And if I were in Diane's position, I would want to get a lawyer, but. Well, ultimately it's going to be the zoning enforcement officer who is going to decide whether that okay. condition has been met. Okay. So I don't. I think we just have to say it's conditional on. Uh, conditional. Not, okay. Yeah. Not I mean, you're, you're you're possibly right, Mark, that they can duke it out amongst that, but it, it is not. It, it's it could be. We don't know who could make the ultimate decisions on okay. some of that stuff. It's not here. That's correct. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm okay. ready to vote then. Ready. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, Diane, we'll get an email out and uh, letting to the town, letting town know about this. And uh, like Bill said, go to see Jennifer tomorrow, give her a call and at least get that discussion moving forward. Very good. Thank you, everybody. You have a wonderful Thanks. night and we'll, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
So next up is Pat Sizz. Hello. Hello. Am I coming through? We hear you. And I'm trying to get my, sorry. Your camera was on and then it was off. There we go. There you are. Much better. Okay. I think we're setting, we're getting used to this technology stuff. Okay. So basically I have an office trailer here at 35 North Maple Street um, set up with my studio. I brought the office trailer here in September of 1993. And at that time got together with the building inspector to double check on possibilities or whatever, double check on any ruins or whatever. At that time, the town was going through some issues with trailers, apparently at the river, mainly, you know, uh, down at the honey pot. Um, some issues may be similar to what was recent or whatever. So the building inspector suggested that I hold off on doing any work uh, from my studio for the office trailer at that time. Um, potentially something was going through town meeting or whatever. And, and he said there was a possibility that the town would totally uh, be against any trailers in town. So I held off on doing any work in the office trailer. And then afterwards got together again with the building inspector, found out that there was no, that whatever the issue was down by the honey pot or with trailers was taken care of. So then I went ahead uh, in the winter or early spring of 1994 and got the permits to do the electricity here, set up electrical and do uh, carpentry work and everything else. Double checked again with the building inspector on, the, on my possibilities or, or making sure that I was within the framework. And he said, basically because I have no, or at that time and still have no running water, plumbing, it's not a habitable trailer. So it's not considered a house trailer. It's not a permanent structure. So I was okay to go ahead and set up my studio in here. Um, and my information that I'm looking for from the board as far as currently being able to apply for doing a, a DBA status. The trailer has 450 square feet divided into three rooms. And according to the business permission, the section of the bylaws or whatever, uh, it has to be no more than 400 square feet is my understanding. However, my measurements out of the 450 square feet that I have within three rooms, actually 52 feet at least is used for storage, is not used for you know, studio purposes or can't be used just for the layout of the trailer. And uh, so I'm looking to find out any possibility of setting up DBA status. Where is this located? 35 North Maple. 30, 35 North Maple Street. For Jack Sis, you yeah. still live. Okay. Right. My mom's my mom's property. It's still my mom is still here. So the trailer is in back in the backyard out behind out behind the garage. Okay. okay. Well, you're not in a business zone. As far as I can tell. Is that correct? Well, it's very close to the uh, industrial park there off of uh, North Maple Street. It's yeah, right. His, his yeah. land is yeah. not yeah. zoned yeah. around us, but we're not. We're not apparently our. But this property is not. So that that was his, his property is owned ag residential. Right. So I was looking as far as a home business. So you you if, possibility. Um. Yeah. The. Well, basically, trailers aren't permitted. That's unfortunately, that's right. Trailers haven't been permitted and uh, by the Hadley zoning bylaw for about 40 years. 40 years. So any information that you might have get, gotten from the building inspector because it wasn't habitable, it was permitted, was incorrect information. Okay. Because I guess at, at that time when I went through and got everything permitted, uh, it was basically considered... I guess it was put as, as storage, as a store, you know, as a storage trailer. So that was that was why I was able to apparently get permits for electricity and 
even for storage trailers weren't permitted back then. Do you have copies of the permits? Are they signed by a representative of the town? Yep, I would have the paperwork from back then. I can I can look that up. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be, be helpful. The uh, you know, so so what are you looking for from us, Mr. Sis? Just basically, so so I'm set up as a, as a music studio. I do my own music work, and I'm looking to get D, uh, DBA status to potentially change from you know doing myself as a as a private contractor or self contracting whatever to actually establish like online business. Because as far as going on to potentially going on to the internet, I would have to be apparently registered as a doing business as if I do not use my own name through yeah. the original intent of a home business or you know as I myself this, doing i don't believe this is the board you come to to ask for dba permission no right no 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 but i mean my my well i'm sorry my question was as far as the square footage taking out the storage space would i be allowed to get a permit for doing for doing uh the business it's probably an existing non-conforming well, right? so are are you living here living in that at that property yes yes okay because both the home occup home office and the home business require that it be owner occupied correct yeah has anybody been complaining pat um not that I know of, not, I mean, again, I came, you know, I set up in September, went through, as I mentioned, and then so yeah. since about springtime of 94, I've been set up, Yeah. and no, no, no problems with neighbors. I've actually checked at different points when I was doing some different music and had someone else play, you know, possibly the loudest instrument, which is drums, apparently, and I walked all around the property and out to the road, and just you know very very lightly because you know it's just soundproofing and everything too so oh. well just aesthetically is it blocked off from everybody else you know is there, is there trees back there or brush or whatever no yeah there's the tree well next door is the industrial park yeah. and um the fir trees mr paradise years ago had fir trees on the, the next door so those are still standing and then there's like a little bit of the woods there and then to the north of us is my mother's second lot, which is actually part of this, is another hay. She basically has two and seven eighths acres, so we have no next door yeah. neighbors. And then there's farmland, and then there's the old green farm to the north. So, oh. is there some way we can say this is pre-existing non-conforming? And because oh. you know he's got permits signed by. Former representative. We don't, we don't know, Mike. And we, it, it, before we waive anything, we want to see what the see if he does have the permits, and he's going to have to go for a home occupation, home business special permit at the minimum. Right. Did you go in front of the CBA back then? Um, not that I remember. Everything was done through the building inspector. And then, and he, again, he told me to hold off that September 93 because of potential issues um, with trailers being removed. And he said, if something goes through, whatever it was, I don't remember exactly. Those you know, two issues, he, yeah, Pat, those two issues were really not connected to yours. I mean, the trailer issue and, and your particular issue, that's. Right, he, he just did maintain things. though, if they did say no trailers, carte blanche, like right across the board, then I would not be able to keep the trailer here. So then after whatever they went through a town meeting or whatever discussion, then I went back to him again and he said, you're okay because it's storage. It's not a uh, permanent structure. Doesn't have water or bathroom or any plumbing or facilities or whatever. Um, and then, so then I went ahead and did the electrical work got the permits to do electrical work and then just did some, some basic interior work, the soundproofing and things like that, so. We can look at look that up tomorrow. What's the address? And if, if you could find anything as well, it would be helpful. Sure. Thir 35 North 35. Maple Street. Yep. But you got also, it. 
also back then it would have been probably originally 41 North Maple Street because I'm not sure when the emergency 911 system came into existence so it would probably have been under under 41 North Maple Street that's the original same address Is that information we can find easily, Tom? Is that going to take a bit of doing? We our files are in great shape. It's we two minutes. We should be able to find it. Yeah, it's there. Oh, okay. It. Well, for proper disclosure, I got to disclose that Pat's my uh, brother-in-law's brother. <laughs> So not immediate family, but I've known him for about 40 years or more. Of course, everybody in Halley's know, known Pat for 40 or more years. You're making me younger, but that's okay. I'll take 40 years. Okay, so we'll figure out where, where you stand and what you have already acquired and um we can come back in uh it'll be three weeks now and we can uh talk about it some more sure okay okay but pat if you're gonna get a name you don't come before us to say if the name's okay you go before the uh select board right bill no, Tom, you, for DBA, you can, you just have to register it. You yeah, can be right. Correct. To register at the town hall. But before I did that, I just wanted to do double check on my ability to do, to go ahead because the, the, the bylaw said the, you know, no more than 400. I think it was something like the combination of the existing structure, the home and the, the accessory structure, which this is 40%, no more than 40% or whatever the square footage of the accessory structure neither the the most it can be would was 400 square feet so i'm the you know the trailer the rooms come in 450 so then my question was i have at least 52 feet that's not used you know it's used as storage or cannot be used for recording or just the, the layout of the trailer whatever would i be under that 400 would i be able to get you sure it's not 52 feet and three inches <laughs> if you've got pat if you if you have any copies of any permits you might have received back then that would be a big help sure sure okay and we've had none, no complaints on it i i just um i remember seeing it there but it's out of sight on mine i never even thought of it you know being used there so well Just look at this as like the Cavern Club in uh, Liverpool. Is, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'll do, we've got to do some research. You've got to do some research yourself, Pat. And we'll meet again with our next planning board meeting is in three weeks from tonight, December 7th. Okay. Oh, thanks for being the forthright, Pat. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Parmar, next, Mr. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Parmar. Hello. So what we want to do, I sent over the plans, is put in three electric chargers, um, pedestals, dual ports, so it's six plugs all together at 24 Bay Road, which is our Hampton Inn, closer towards the bridge. Eversource um, is having to do the work. They're having universal electric trench from a little bit behind the property on the east side come around and to um, the parking area to the island and then install three pedestals. And on top of this pedestals, the chargers will be installed. 
So I did send those around to you when they came in earlier today. Yep. Um, let me see if I can just put it up on the... Looks like the, the charging project's going ahead over at Stop and Shop. Okay, so it is an 11 page document PDF. Uh, um, if you go to the second page is the site overview. Okay, so hang on a second. Let me get set up to share and share. Okay, second page. Yeah, I think it's C1, sheet number C1. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially to the right would be towards the south and that's Bay Road. Uh, to the left, if you're looking at it, would be towards Route 9. And the meeting house would be directly left of this uh, where the meeting house was. So they're going to trench from the back, which is where Eversource is, to the front where the parking spaces are. And then install three pedestals right there on that um, on that island. Um, I met with conservation committee this morning. They came and do a site plan. I am going to see them next month at their uh, next meeting too. I'm sorry, didn't mean to jump. That's okay. Off. I mean, that's another, that's, that's the transform. If you look at that middle picture right there, that's the essentially north east corner of the building that's transformer right there behind that bush is where they're coming off of and around okay and again just more construction detail um protection um, more detail than we need for <laughs> zoning purposes Yeah, those are, I believe those are the pedestals right there that they're installing. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for this installation for three uh, charging stations. Second. It's actually six. I mean, it's three, what, it's three pedestals, but it's six. Yeah, each charger does two. Right, so right. each pedestal does two cars. So just to be right. Well, we'll say three pedestals. Right. Okay. I don't think it matters how many cars that it does. Right. Right. Uh, it's the pedestal that is the taking up space. Three charging pedestals, great. And I will also send you the, just so we're all clear, the, uh, <clears throat> Uh, the statement of what waiver of site plan approval is and isn't. Okay. Uh, because you'll still have to go through the building department and the electrical inspector and all conservation commission. Yeah. We're... So that's the motion. Motion and seconded to waive for the site plan approval for three charging pedestals. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Motion passes unanimously. Um, Keisha, what are you doing with the old baiting house? Going to be doing anything with that, or? <laughs> so that's a question. Um, you know, I don't want to name the office or the people who are doing it. Um, but they came to us during. You know, people have time. They came to us during the middle of the pandemic when there was like no end to sight for us. Um, it's supposed to be a veterinarian hospital. Um, and they're going to be leasing it from us and they have to do a lot of work inside and pull a lot of permits. So we've informed them um, who to contact, where to contact. Um, we recommend using Western builders too. I know Western's, um, you know, familiar with the town. They've done a couple of projects. So hopefully they'll be starting 
within the next couple of months. Um, we're trying to we're trying to get them to start because we just don't like seeing the building go idle right now either. Yeah, we were. It was sad to see the meeting house go up because that was an excellent banquet facility. Yeah, we were we were kind of. It, it wasn't an easy decision by us whatsoever but it was in the middle of pandemic we had no end in sight and it was just it was just crazy and on hindsight you know even if we opened it up right now we probably couldn't find anyone to staff the place i'd probably be bussing tables right now and doing it myself <laughs> so and i don't have time to do that ah, joe's joe z said he's looking for part-time job well you know i was gonna say bussing <laughs> tables is an honorable profession i've done it <laughs> i'm too old for that <laughs> Well, good luck. Joe's got a good table side manner too. Well, I, I ended up cleaning rooms instead of bussing tables over the summer. So I went back to where I started from. So mm -hmm. how about the roadway? Well, while, while you're on, I just the, oh, the yes, planning board. I, yeah, I love there's... talking to you guys. Um <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping so commercial lending for hotels is still a bad topic when you talk to any loan officer. Um, we still plan on going ahead and doing that sometime next year. I mean, if I could start next week, I would. Um, but we're working on some things to get the financing in line. Um, you know, we're, we're refinancing other properties that has to go through. And then we kind of piggyback from there to do the roadway and knock that down. So we're hoping to start in the spring. Um, you know, from what we learned, we better start and get the site in all the excavation done before winter. So we would start in spring of demo and digging it up. That's still the plan, but with COVID and everything, who knows what could happen? You know, we could hit a bubble and no one's lending anymore and no one wants to touch any project. So that that was approved what two and a half years ago or so? <laughs> that was approved, I think, in over over the summer of 2019, I think, around there, or yeah. early 2019. And we were supposed to start it last year. Okay. So, just to keep you aware, I mean, you've got a three-year window. If you're going to go beyond the three years from date of approval, just come back and ask for an extension. Uh, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. We, we don't want that to lapse on you. No, I'm That's getting why I brought it up. I need to start a project, too. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, we, we've had one, one over a year of this sitting around hoping for the best between my brother and I and my dad so we we need we really want to start something start going going right. again that was the one that got us going on on building height and definitions i believe right all right, all right. Was, uh, wasn't that hai architects i think maybe mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay okay well, good, well, good luck thank all you right, for the you. information thank you for the updates okay take care <laughs> bye Take care. Okay. Mr. Comia. Finally. Sorry about that. Oh, it's Easy always way. good to hear what, what, what you guys are working on and what's before you. Uh, did you need to um, officially open or did you want to just kind of talk through um, some of these conversations that we're continuing? I think we maybe just talk and we'll just remember to continue the hearing if, okay. uh, or, or if we think we're getting anywhere, we can open the hearing. But uh, I think uh, I'd rather just uh, bounce it around a little bit first. Yeah. So I, you know, the, the, at the last meeting, I think we came to a place where the text that was drafted was, I think, where we were going to leave alone until um you know we we did some additional research um and talked through um with other communities on how this may be working for other communities and so um i was able to um discuss with the town of shrewsbury um as i mentioned they were just under a million dollars for um their uh, inclusionary housing payment in lieu of um, fund, um, but they didn't have the ability to expend any money because they did not have a trust fund yet. So I, they just, the, earlier this year, um, assembled and the town passed a housing trust fund 
And so now they're, you know, um, um, choosing the members of the trust fund, um, which include a member of the planning board, a member um, of some other, you know, um, housing um, related advocacy um, uh, parties, um, but they haven't yet expended any of the money that they've accrued um, over time. And I think, so that was since 2006, over almost a million dollars has accrued um, to expend. Um, in talking to their town planner and to their director of planning and conservation, um, the, the planning and community development director, um, he suggested that they're going to try to be moving fast. Um, they have, um, they were working behind the scenes with regards to um, a community development corporation that wanted to develop some affordable housing to increase their subsidized housing inventory. So um, they they haven't given, he hasn't necessarily explained any experience of those experiences to me, other than sharing that they just assembled the uh, um, affordable housing trust fund in order to convene and then start talking to um, a possible developer um, uh, in a friendly 40B. So um, I guess it, it's a positive thing um, because they've been working behind the scenes to do that work. Um, so, but it, it only time will tell on how, you know, what that process looks like. I think in also talking to him, um, you know, is this, is the, and in, in trying to navigate what we've been doing as what, what the board has been doing in trying to establish regulations for uh, payment in lieu of, um, how will the board be involved with that type of I guess, advocacy for the development of affordable housing. Um, before you go on, uh, sure. I, I have a friend who, who's who got uh, a son who lives in Shrewsbury and it's on Route 20 where they're okay. putting the market basket up and evidently the housing has started already. I'm not sure if that's the affordable housing, uh, the friendly 40B you were talking about, but uh, you, that's from your neck of the woods. Uh, is the construction started or is that a different project? No, that, so that probably, that may be another project. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't live out there anymore, Joe. I no, I know you don't, there. but okay. uh, uh, I, I'll think I'll take a ride out there and just take a look and see. But it sounds like, Shrewsbury sounds like something we would uh, 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 take hold of the, under the friendly 40B if we have to do anything. So well, and we I would I would I would agree with you because I think the way that you have established your town where you have Route 9 is where you're going to have that mo most of that activity. Being familiar with Shrewsbury, there there also is um, when I lived out there, there was a development that included affordable housing um, next to a Whole Foods. So there was um, you know the Whole Foods, there was a new Whole Foods that was there and a nice new um, uh, you know, shopping complex, but okay. also attached were lots of apartments um, and condos um, right off the main thoroughfare. So, the, so and, the and there was, was yeah, okay. and, and, and there was uh, a component of affordability with those units. I know that. All right. Um, but yeah, I guess my, my question was, um, you know, under trying to understand and in, in trying to navigate what the planning board is going to be doing with regards to this regulation and understanding too that there may be a part or a responsibility that you may have as a board in maybe approaching, if at all, um, a developer. Um, it's like, how, how, how much do you wanna like dip your toes in into the, the conversation about developing housing? Um, that, I guess that's my question, just trying to understand that so that, you know, what we're addressing is not necessarily the crux of what the regulations that the planning board is responsible to set. Well, I'll, I'll kind of give my opinion first, and uh, it's probably not anything new to the other members of the board. 
First of all, the gesture is a very, very noble gesture, and I don't think anyone disapproves of the fact that, you know, we, as a community, community meaning state, almost nationwide, there is more affordable housing needed. Uh, having said that, the rubber meets the road. If it's in your backyard, uh, so that is why if we could maneuver someone just hypothetically, for example, if uh, part of the mall, let's say uh, JC Penney's went out and the mall is going to be in disarray, uh, maybe a place like that where we could direct it, where it's on sewer, it's on uh, the, uh, the bus routes and uh, but I'm not willing to attack something like that immediately, but have it in our arsenal that it would be available to us. Because like I said, we have this almost 13% and we're not competing to make it 15, 18% like Holyoke or something like that. So, uh, then, okay, I'll, I'll stop my little editorial comments, but uh, those are kind of my feeling there. We, we need something on paper, and that's what we're working on now. And uh, I wouldn't I really that. pull the trigger unless something appropriate came well, along. I think we have to talk, start talking about how we'd, we would want to amend the zoning bylaw to allow something like this to happen on Route 9. Well, would it, would it follow under the... Uh, the, a friendly 40B means we wouldn't have to amend the zoning bylaw. We'd have to go through the zoning board of appeals. Yeah. Well, couldn't we, we? We would certainly want to give some direction, and certainly given what's happened to the cost of construction. The notion that you're going to have standalone units is not going to work. I, I, I was talking to Haley uh, over at the the uh, the uh, senior center yesterday, and she asked me to come to a meeting tomorrow on affordable housing, which quite frankly shocked me. <laughs> you know, but but you know, we we just had a very nice conversation, and I, I may go to the meeting. It's at eleven a.m. tomorrow, and I just think we got to look at housing for the next you know, 50, 60 years, not so, you know, and Hadley's pretty much become the Rodeo Drive of Hampshire County. <laughs> We've got everything there. And so, well, I didn't, I didn't mean to digress, Ken. Uh, so I just wanted to get my, well, well, but my point is we're going to have to look at a building for senior housing, not separate one story Okay, Mike, when do you want to start building? Do you want to start it next year, the year after, or do you want to wait until we get closer to the 10% threshold? I think, we, I, think I want to be in front. Oh, okay. I think I want, so, I think I want to lead the gentlemen, way. Gentlemen, so, so I have the amended and restated affordable housing agreement uh, between Winfield Family Apartments and the Massachusetts Housing Partnership Fund. This dates from 2023. The term of the affordable housing restrictions imposed by this agreement shall expire on June 27, 2023. How, how much does that include, Bill? That is the Winfield uh, family apartments. There's new owners now, Bill. Right, but it's many, subject to this. How many affordable units does that account for? Uh, well, because of how you count, uh, as long as you get over a thir certain threshold, every unit in there, even the market rate ones, counts as affordable and rental property. Mm -hmm. So we can move uh, quite, quite a few in two years, less than two years. I, and I, think, I think too, because I'm assuming that there has been, you know, housing development since the 2010 census, right? So the 2020 census data that's going to be coming out, DHCD will be certifying the, that those data points. Presumably, that number will decrease a little bit. Um, so, I mean, just being mindful of that, um, and then knowing that that 
Winfield properties will be sunsetting in 2023 unless those conversations are occurring. Um, I don't know, yeah, I, I, cause I'm not very familiar um, off the bat what, what Hadley's SHI is. Um, but, you know, I think it's just good to be mindful that this discussion needs to be happening. And I think understanding too that um, having talked to the town administrator and uh, a former member of the select board um, that the the town may be looking at applying for um, a DLTA grant to help support a housing production plan next year, um, which will address and which will, if approved, you know, protect somewhat the, the continuance of your um, 10% plus. Well, well, as, as Dr. Zagronik said, we clearly Route 9 or close to Route 9 is the place it should be. We got public transportation, we got sewer, uh, and and we've got access to uh, grocery stores and whatever doctors' offices right there. Uh, I, I, I do. Yeah, I question, do. Feel, yeah, go ahead, Bill. Sorry. Yeah, your question. It, it's a little muddy for us right now because, as you know, presently the entire planning board makes up most of the affordable housing trust fund, and we did that not with the intention of controlling the affordable housing trust fund, but just with the intention of getting it up to speed with people who had background. Um, so I think from the planning board perspective, I think what we want to focus on is the technical wording of a bylaw that will allow payment in lieu as a realistic option to creating affordable units on site. But I think that the uh, issue of some of the, the bigger issues of where affordable housing should go, um, almost think that might be more of the affordable housing trust funds and some of the other uh, economic development and housing committee that, um, that meets occasionally. Um, I, I just I want to be mindful that we're we're, we're a yeah. lot of interlocking you know, directorships here. Yes, yeah, exactly. Somebody has to be in charge, and these ad hoc committees getting together to talk about affordable housing just muddies the waters. I think I, I may go to this thing tomorrow to see where it is. Nothing against it, but this is, uh, I thought we had this affordable housing committee that perhaps you were sitting on, Bill. Right? But nothing yes. really. Happened. That. Well, it, no, it, it's it's continuing to meet. Yeah. Um, but what we found out is that there is also another the uh, committee on um, in, in inclusion and welcoming that um, it was also looking at housing issues. And now you see that uh, the uh, seniors Haley at the senior center is trying to get into uh, housing. Uh, issues. So I think the issue is, yes, you're right there. The select board hasn't set a, hasn't set a policy. I think they, it's important that they do it, don't you? Yes. I think that setting up these, these ad hoc committees is fine if they can get the work done, but you set them up and it, it's fire and forget. You don't go back to see what they're doing. Yeah. And um, that's, that's always been the um, that's always been the place where things slip through the cracks, especially when you get turnover on the select board and the people who were concerned about housing and inclusion uh, aren't there anymore. Yeah, I, I was also invited to that meeting. I declined because I'm trying to keep uh, trying to keep my uh, a profile low so I can go out to uh, visit my eight month old granddaughter who is unvaccinated. So I'm trying to avoid mm. crowds. Um, but um, yeah, it, there's, it, it's fine that there's all this interest in it, but uh, I think it does need, um, it, it, and perhaps it is the Affordable Housing Trust Fund which is established by town meeting, which should be taking the lead on this, but 
it's not going to happen with the five of us on it because we're swamped with everything else we're doing. So um, again, I'd like to, what I'd like to do is get, get the tools, you know, work on building the tools. We want to get the bylaw in place as best well, we can. well there's we're talking about how do you put money into the affordable housing trust what's the formula that's number one but the whole thing about changing the zoning bylaw to allow this to happen on route nine is a completely separate issue mm -hmm. completely separate issue and so no. this yeah did, did, did you what did what did you come here to talk about ken more affordable housing or, or how we get money into the affordable housing trust well, I think the, the task at the last meeting was to establish what those other communities and how, what those experiences were um, with regards to the payment in lieu of fee regulation yeah. that yeah. we are basing these numbers on and that we are basing the process on. Mm -hmm. um, the, this particular example from Shrewsbury is the, the calculation that we're working off of. And um, my, you know, I was, I was asking the, the planning director over there, what their experience in expending and just, you know, what their experience of developers actually utilizing those payment in lieu of fees. Yeah. They, they're not, not. They're, they're, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the planning board and those conversations that are happening, um, they give them a hard time, um, you know, if they can't build on site. Um, in accordance with their their bylaw, so that I mean that was just the general comment that he made that they will ensure that all other options are exhausted, um, either through you know negotiations that happen publicly at a select board meeting or a planning board meeting, um, but they want those uh, units on site. So, what formula do they use for payment in lieu? Can you repeat that one more time, Mike? What formula do they use for payment in lieu? That was the, so the one that we are using, which is the average price of uh, Hadley um, home. Um, and there's some um, criteria minus the purchase price of what an affordable housing unit is in the Springfield MSA which we came to at the last meeting, uh, a price of about 184,000. So th have they been getting donations into their fund in Shrewsbury through, through their formula? Yes, um, they have, but I, I think the experience has been that those were like, um, there, was, there was some hardship that was posed that the planning board agreed to allow them to um, accept those funds. And that, that was the amount of um, right under a million that they oh. have currently in their affordable housing trust okay. fund. But, but the point we were talking about at the last meeting or two meetings ago was that the fact that you've got a cutoff of six and if you have more than six units, then you've got to put into the trust fund. But if you have less, less than six, you don't. So I think this is really uh, almost a due process issue you're tr you're treating if somebody comes in and buys bills five five million dollar homes they don't have to put a nickel into the trust fund we, and if they build six four hundred thousand dollar homes they do what's what's the rationale there so we, i we, mike mike calm down we agree with that right yeah but 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 this is what i thought he was going to be addressed i really don't care what shrewsbury's doing we're going to be better than shrewsbury Okay, so I came Bill, across an alternative. Mike, Mike, we agree with that. We're trying to it. get with Mike, calm down. Yeah. We're trying to get to where we want to be and include those under less than five homes. We're trying to find out what we, we, we have to have a starting point of what we want to do. And we're using Shrewsbury. What did they do? What do they have? What's happening there? You were one of the ones that kept asking, what is Shrewsbury actually getting out of this? We asked Mike to Ken to go right. do some research. He has done that research. Well, I haven't seen the minutes, so I don't know what I said, asked really. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
I have been, <clears throat> I had a conversation and I sent around a newspaper article to everyone about uh, this, um, what Waitley has done, uh, this Hannah Davis, who is um, right. their uh, development manager supporting the various boards. But I had a long conversation with her about our TDR and she raised something that she's looking into. And Ken, you may know more about this. She, they, she called it a resource replacement fee. And it was something that uh, Waitley is looking to assess that uh, if, you, um, if you put up a solar field uh, on your farmland, um, they are basically doing a sort of a transfer of development rights. You're taking the farmland out of production. So um, you need to pay into a resource replacement um, pool. And I think that's not unlike what we were talking about, uh, Mike, about whether, you know, get out of the uh, five or yeah. six, six or more, five or less, and go to some sort of a, um, we just have to figure out how we can make it a fee without making it a tax so that, um, and I, I think that's what was, you brought to us, Ken, from what was going on on the Cape, that uh, right. that might be a better alternative. Because frankly, when I saw the amount that would a developer would have to pay in, and I'll use the example of uh, colony, uh, colony estates, it's a, it's a one, um, they're just enough over to trigger the requirement for one affordable unit. And, um, you know, $185,000 on a seven lot subdivision is, um, I think that knocks the economics out of developing small subdivisions. Um, I just can't see that being a realistic. No, exactly. Well, it, we didn't know until we got the numbers <laughs> from uh, the assessors and worked it through Ken's formula, but it took my breath away. And I don't, I'm now thinking maybe that's not the way to go, but if they're, so that's why we're kind of going around in circles because we're, well, we're not really going around in circles. We're, my, uh, my father-in-law used to say there's, every experiment is helpful because you learn something from it. Even if you don't get the result you like. So maybe the cash formula when I appreciate everything Ken did to, to pull one together, but maybe the cash formula is not realistic for us given the values that we are dealing with. So um, I don't know, Ken, what do you know about the, this resource replacement fee concept? Not much, but I think, you know, the way that you've been describing it, Bill, is, um, is similar. I'm imagining to wh how, what the concept of charging per parcel as they do on the Cape for housing development. I feel like that's, you know, th that's analogous and that's similar in, 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 in context. Um, I'm not very familiar. I don't know how it's established um, either in the Berkshires or or on Waitley or if she's just exploring it now. Um, I'm I'm not as familiar. Um, but so, I, so she is yeah. she is very new on the job. Does not have much of a planning background. So um, she may be using terms that are. Uh, that have another meaning to others. That's fair. Um, I mean, I, the thing, the example that we were talking about on the Cape, um, and there are some other examples, um, is would require a zoning bylaw change. It would be a whole, you know, different approach to the, the development of housing in Hadley versus the way that your inclusionary um, housing, your inclusionary zoning um, currently reads um, because it would now assess per parcel a certain amount of fee, I guess. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, it, it it's really at the board's, yeah, at the how the board wants to approach what your payment in lieu of fee is going to be based on you currently have a bylaw that does not have a set of regulations that have established a calculation to if, oh, if it, yeah I, I think what we have to say is this if if the dollar cost of the development is greater than x dollars then you'll be putting in a percentage of that so that that way we're not including people that are building a 450 well maybe you can't do that in Hadley anymore but I, I think you, we want to say that if, say, the cost of the development is $3 million or more, and this is a random number, then you're going to be putting in 3%. And that way, we're catching the properties that are uh, the, the McMansions, you know? Uh, I just throw that, throw that out. But I think that's how we're going to have to look at it. We don't want to dissuade a, a smaller a middle class guy from building a house on a, on one lot, but if somebody is coming in and, and putting up a significant de development dollar wise, not unit wise, mm -hmm. then I think we want to uh, capture some money from that. Uh, if that's the right word, from that development. Thoughts? Hmm. I could speak up. What if we did something that was progressive? I mean, I. I, I haven't done the math or thought it through, but what if we, instead of, what if we said something, we, we worked it the other way, where we said, if you're gonna build a house, uh, if you're gonna develop, a, you know, you're gonna build one property, uh, you know, you contribute, you know, let's say 5% of the sale price to, the affordable housing. If you're gonna do two, your first one is five, your second one is 10%. You're gonna do three, it's, you know, and eventually by the time they build six, they have a choice to either not pay those and build an affordable, you know, I, I'm just saying, what if, you know, if we somehow got some, you know, so I hear what you're saying that, if we don't get any contributions until someone does six houses or more, that's not serving the ultimate goal. So if you start well, with something yeah. that's not going to not going to discourage the small one or two project, but still, then you can accumulate it. You know, yeah, uh, you know. We're, we're talking about the construction side uh, side of the, the uh, equation. Uh, you know, we could always look at the sales side of the equation. When you sell your house, you're going to put one and a half percent into the affordable housing trust. Uh, that way, you capture everybody. What, what, perhaps one and a half percent of your net profit, your your uh, net after paying off the mortgage or something like that. And uh, what do you think of that? I think that, that, way you'd be, that way you'd be capturing everybody. That's probably not legal. That'll probably have to go through the select board, huh? I don't know. They're trying to do it in New York City. Why is it legal? <laughs> well, that's that's What's a good it? example, Mike. Well, yeah, uh, right. Well, I knew that. I knew that's my former place of residence would be useful for something. So, uh, Cape Cape and the Islands have a a, a transfer tax. Yeah, and um, it's above and beyond the state excise tax for for the sale of real estate, and it goes into the. Um, I don't know, Ken, if you know anything. I think it's the Cape and Islands Land Trust or something like that. That's that rings a bell, but I don't. I can't really speak to. I I don't know exactly how it works, and it probably would require some level of state legislation, and probably it, it it's kind of like having what we already have as a local meals tax and a local rooms tax on the hotels. Um, well, I think a transfer tax would really simplify the whole thing. I mean, you, you pick it up on every, every real estate transaction that happens. 
I think that would probably be a bylaw change then. Because I think it, you're might, right, right? it might even require state legislation. Well, uh, we can look at it, but do you think there's is there any attractiveness to that type of thing to, to the rest of the board? No. I, I, I well, think that, I, I like I, the I idea. It on, rather trying to figure out the formula on, on, on the construction end, we do it on the selling end. We'd well, have to do it on a selling price on that. Yeah, sure. And that's something that would be you know, be self-managing. We wouldn't be holding public hearings on it. It would just be um, once exactly. you adopt the local option tax. Um, yeah, because don't you agree this is becoming a bit tedious? <laughs> well, you know? sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, but, we, like you say, this would allow us to not be in the circle anymore, as you put it. Maybe we did learn something. Maybe it's so, better to get it at the other end. Yeah. So a variation might be something uh, along the lines of TDR, which we already have, yeah. um, but with the this this TDR going to affordable housing instead of say agricultural preservation. Huh. But a transfer fee would be even something like 1% of the sales price would bring in a huge amount of money over the course of a period of time. Bingo. <laughs> but, you know, again, that, that's, that's probably a state, that's, a, that's almost guaranteed to be a state legislature thing to require it. Yes. The, uh, like the, it sounds similar to like the CPA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But don't you agree it would simplify things on our end that we wouldn't have to go through this thing every time somebody comes in with a project and what are you going to give and this is the value and blah 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 the market will take care of what goes into it if the price if the you know the, if the uh price of a five hundred thousand dollar home is in 15 years is uh one and a half million then the market took care of the problem I think we should make that Mike's senior project that he has to get this passed through Boston. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I heard they don't allow Republicans into the state house anymore. But I think you get. <laughs> I don't they think don't anyone. Allow, they don't, don't allow think, anybody in. Right. I mean, that's right. a lot they of cat hurting your constituents down there. I mean it. it, it it's possible. We gotta we gotta stick with what we can with what we can do. And get yeah, well, done. this is an idea, and I think it's. A, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but it really simplifies things. Who who do you know in state legislature to get that uh, question, Mike? I haven't known anybody in the state legislature since Stan Rosenberg retired. Oh. So I, I was thinking of one other thing and I'm, I'm having trouble pulling it together um the um zoning incentives um that we could allow um you know if you want to put in a depending on whether you're on sewer or not, if you want to put in a 25,000 square foot lot instead of a 30,000 square foot lot, sure, but you're going to have to do a transfer of development rights payment to the affordable housing to get that. So that sort of uh, puts the burden on the developer, takes it off the property owner, the seller perhaps, but mm -hmm. puts it on the developer to say that, you know, how much do you want to come? We've had the, uh, the those planned unit developments in the past. And I know other communities have a range of subdivision options. Sundle had something like that built. And it didn't seem to work, so. Well, the, what we were what we were given that time when we were uh, as a proposal was Incomplete, to put it charitably. 
Yes. Um, but I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I necessarily want to go there because that has its own complexities, but, um, and I'm not sure the level of construction we're dealing with warrants that, but, um, Yeah, I, I, I guess I would feel more comfortable if we sort of spread the burden around rather than extracting $200,000 from one developer for one unit that we, um, we had everybody who's in the building game contribute towards creating affordable properties as well as custom properties. <laughs> Another... I, I, that sounds good to me too. Yeah, just... Another voice is heard. My second assistant. This is thing <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, come Talk about hurting cats in Boston. I don't know. Thing two is usually close by. That's Mac. Is the other one cheese? Uh, uh, Funny you should say that. Um, originally, she was named Cheese. We just didn't think that suited her, so we call her Maisie. <laughs> but she's a calico. So, where, where do we go from here, gents? Because we've got a bunch of ideas, and there's a good sized hole in every one of them. Yeah. Do we, is there, I mean, I, I really like, if, if there's a legal way that we can spread it out instead of, instead of you have to hit a limit, which as, as Mike exactly. and, and, and others have said, once you hit a limit, you're, you're kind of almost, you know, what we've gotten one in, in five years, you know, wouldn't it be better to have something smaller that we can get more consistently? So I guess, well, is that something? Yeah, we, we, I'm sorry, sorry I'm almost ahead, done. Yeah. Can we ask um, PDPC to do some re research on what our options are in that area? Because that's not what we've really been taught. We've been talking about in lieu of at a trigger point. And now I'm done, Mike. Well, well let's, way, let's, 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 get, let's get four bullet points. What do we want? We want number one, simplicity, understandable. We don't want it to be onerous. We want it to be inclusive. And what else? The current CPA is what, 3% bill in Hadley? Yes. And, and that's 3% of the sales price? No, uh, it <laughs> is it's 3% uh, surcharge on our tax rate. Well, three percent. Three percent. Three percent on our tax. The state portion comes out of the deeds excise tax, which is okay. four dollars and fifty six cents per thousand of consideration. Okay. Now, not all of that goes to CPA. Um, some of it goes to other state purposes, but a portion of that $4.56 per thousand is uh, dedicated to CPA. Okay. We just got a very big CPA this, this quarter, this, uh, this term. Nice so, contribution from the state. So, Mike, your bullet points were simple slash understandable, not onerous to the property owner, I assume. And, inclu and inclusive. So, you know. And is there the Shrewsbury one? If we have to emulate a committee, I mean, a town for our committee, uh, Shrewsbury is it's a bigger community it's probably a little bit more affluent than hadley but it, it has the same problems it's right next to worcester 
we're right next to UMass. I mean, we're going to build affordable units, and there's certainly going to be some students involved in the other units. Uh, I don't. I think we should keep the conversation going alive with Shrewsbury rather than kind of darting around and trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, but well, so Ken, this is your chance to make a name for yourself in the planning field, because I think that we were the first community to adopt a transfer development rights bylaw. And that was something that Chris Curtis, who has been retired for longer than you have been at PVPC. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a conversation with them um, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So uh, he brought that to us, and uh, you know we're still getting phone calls from people asking how it works. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we're not probably going to figure it out, but maybe just keep a level of intention of attention on it. Sure. Uh, I don't know how long we can continue our public hearing. Uh, uh, the option of regulations, but well, if, you know, if anybody's watching us and they have input, they're welcome to come and give us some input. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it would be welcomed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only input I've gotten is uh, raise the uh, threshold for uh, where it inclusionary zoning kicks in, and it's something about Amherst kicks in at ten or twelve or more, but we're not having 10 or 12 unit property uh, subdivisions as a general rule in Hadley. Right. No. So I think all the more reason to get away from tick, 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 and then a big hammer comes down. Exactly. Let's, let's go with a small progressive. Otherwise we're sitting here waiting on ducks that don't hatch. <laughs> I don't know. That was, that was some uh, kind of can we institute probably may, maybe well and this, they may consider this a tax. Can we institute an inclusionary zoning fee fee on every lot that's sold in a town of Hadley Bill? You know, if we adopted it. Um, I think we'd have to collect it at our level when we sign off on a plan, okay. whether it's an ANR or, uh, no, the ANRs that are straightening out property lines, things like that, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't fret about, but when someone's laying out, uh, well, you know, to your example, Mike, if someone had enough frontage to lay out, uh, six a and r lots with frontage along um route 47, 47 north hadley um they wouldn't pay us a penny to uh affordability because that's not a subdivision right um but they do have to come to us and get it signed off on so whether it is a formal subdivision or um, an ANR, and um, I, I just don't know at what point you cross the line from it being a, uh, a fee to a tax. Yeah, I just, I don't want to capture this at the lot level. I want to capture it at the final construction level. What did, what, what did, what did you put up? What did it cost? Because every lot's going to be the same, pretty much. You know, 160, 200, 220. But mm -hmm. about a hundred, a two hundred twenty thousand dollar, twenty two two hundred twenty thousand dollar lot can have a six hundred thousand dollar home on it, or one point three million dollar home on it. Right. So that that we cannot capture at the local level. Right. So that would be something that would require a um, um, yeah, it would require state legislation. Well, you know, if they're serious about affordable housing, then uh, I, I, somebody might want to get their name on that bill. So 
So what I what I will say is that because I there was some rumblings about something like transfer fees. And so I just, you know, did a quick Google search. And it seems as if this year um, there are some organizations that were advocating for um, legislation to allow transfer fees to support affordable housing um, in September. So I don't know where this legislation is, but basically it authorizes the town to collect um, a transfer fee between 0.5 and 2% on a purchase price of a property being sold above either the statewide median sale price for single family homes or the county median sale price for single family homes if a local median sale price is lower than the statewide median sale price. Did you just well, pick that, did you just find that now? Yeah, I just found it yeah, now. That's, that's uh, interesting. I, I, so that's right, state well, legislation I, that's probably going through, you know, whatever process it's going through at the moment. Yeah. But those monies would be able to be deposited into the affordable housing trust fund. Yeah. Um, so that would be for every real estate transfer. Above a certain amount, above the median. Right. Yeah. yeah. That okay. would be an interesting one because then you could I like I like that. Yeah. Because then the 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 common Joe isn't going to be paying exactly. anything. But to Mike's point, those that are paying the mega the, the, the uh, mini mansions could be paying a reasonable fee. Yeah. So then if, I like that, that. if that were in place, um, uh, would we even need to do a payment in lieu formula? You could do no. it. You, you could do it for a higher number, you know, like you were saying, like for 10 units or something. We'd have to think about it at that point in time. If this, if this bylaw or if this state law were to come to pass, then we could reconsider our, our inclusionary zoning thing. And you just earned your salary by finding that. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I'm gonna put well, it. I'm gonna put a link in the chat. Um, but there, there. Are some, yeah, I'll email it to you as well. Um, there are some. So there's some supporting evidence in this article. Um, through CHAPA, which is a housing advocacy um, group. Oh, yeah. we've, we've had classes by them, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, shows a luxury real estate, this is obviously in Boston, um, transfer fee of 2% applied to sales of just two luxury buildings in Boston would have generated more than $16 million for the Neighborhood Housing Trust Fund. The report projects that if there had been a 2% real estate transfer fee on home sales valued above 140%, of the current median sale price of $463,000 in Braintree, for example, the city would have raised an estimated $826,000 in revenue from 247 transactions between 2015 and 2020. I just pasted your link into an email and sent it to planning. So oh, great. Bill, Bill has it. Yep. More work for Bill. Go, Bill. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's a, that's a that's a, a very that's a big change, you know where you would, where the planning board and where the town would be, more I guess hands off because you would already be getting those or your your thought would be, that, maybe this particular setup where transfer fees above a certain amount for you know housing tra uh, transfers um, would automatically add to your housing trust fund um, but would would you still want to require that developers who are developing new housing maybe with the intention of securing additional grants from the state and you know you work with a nonprofit would they be required to still do a payment in lieu of or do you now just require you know housing that's developed i don't think so they're going to sell that house that they built to, to an owner and we've got to make sure that they can't escape that by 
selling the lot and then building the house for the person, okay? Which, which I think we was talked about before. There's ways to get around it, but we can't allow it to happen. So if, if, it's, if it's new construction, it's gonna have to be the total value of the final product, okay? And it doesn't matter who builds it. It's the total value of the final product. And basically, everyone's contributing at that exactly. level. Yeah. So we don't we don't want to. We're not going to do a formula. I don't think, unless other people agree, payment in lieu formula because this takes care of it. That's it assuming goes, that it gets. It, it, really, it really simplifies things quite a bit because, like we said, we're just going around in circles. Yep. Well, yeah. No, I think that's good, but still. I mean, I don't see it happening, but if someone wants to come in and build a development with 10 or 12 units, don't we still want to get some affordable in there? And so, yeah, well, this, this, this payment in lieu, this, this state fee has not come to fruition. Yeah. So we've got to work with what's in front of us. Right. So, so, yeah, exactly. So the current bylaw does have the three options. <clears throat> put it in your put it in your subdivision. Uh, dedicate another unit elsewhere in town, or do a payment in lieu. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not so concerned about the the size of the payment in lieu if we have um, you know a couple of options in there. Well, the, the yeah. payment in lieu for over six units, I, you know, so what if it's significant? That encourages them to do something on their own in town and not contribute to the payment in lieu. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I, I agree with you, Bill. If it's a, if it's a hefty payment, so what? Then don't contribute. Do something on your own. Build it. Right. That's right. But getting back to the original point, there was a property in yesterday or two days ago on the paper in Hadley sold for up in North Hadley off of Shattuck Road for eight hundred twenty thousand dollars. We didn't get a nickel. Brand new construction. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're going to pay some serious, but taxes aren't going to be based on the sales price of the home either. Oh, well, I'm talking about money into the affordable housing trust. Right. Right. Well, yeah. But it's all good stuff here, guys. You know, the, the, the significant payment for six or more units where they have to put something up, you know, we, we can make that formula probably was, was similar, very close to what Ken is saying. Now, it, it's the zero to five that we've got to try to look at and not just pass those off as well, they don't need to do anything. You know, um, But if we do this formula, they don't have to do anything because it's going to be based on what the value of the property is. Well, that's only if those things pass, Mike. Yeah, right. right, right. Okay, so we right. can't base our doing doing something on that's going to pass. If it passes, then we can basically take those those fees out. But if it's All right zero to five, we should be making them do something. Just, just so maybe we have them contribute to the affordable housing at some percentage, you know, three, four, five percent um, for each unit, or build an affordable unit, you know, which of course they'll just contribute. So that that was the examples that I provided from I think which and P in Provincetown, um, where their inclusionary zoning bylaw was just that. Um, so we can, we can look at your current inclusionary zoning, because as, you know, as the board has mentioned that, that requirement only kicks in when you're at unit six, number six. So if you're uh, trying to address zero or one through five, maybe taking a look at how they are addressing affordability 
or you know other places are addressing affordability for those units and how you know the responsibility lies on any sort of housing development all all i know is we haven't had a dime come in to the affordable housing trust since uh east street commons yeah. and clearly there was a lot of been a lot of development that's gone into town that somehow you know if we had put our foot down and not allowed the East Street Common developer to put in money in lieu of building the affordable housing, like probably we should have, then we wouldn't be in this dilemma. So, uh, and because the, the, problem, the, the, problem, the problem was, how do you keep track of the numbers? So. And it's just seemed easy. Just give them money and and we'll worry about it later. And we're still worrying about it. So speaking of East Street Commons, I'm going to, uh, we did get a check from uh, Bacon Wilson for the amount as of a while back, but there's still some units selling in there, aren't there? Yes. Still things under construction. They haven't been built. I think there's two or three that haven't been built yet. One's under construction. Okay. I've got to think there've been some more sales. Um, and we also had a uh, transfer of development rights component in there after they hit a certain number of rooms. So uh, we may have to revisit uh, what's going on. Now, uh, perhaps give Mr. Reedy a call. They planted some trees and they got lampposts now. <laughs> Soon you'll have so, indoor plumbing. So, Ken, what, what do you think about all this? What, what, what do you? How do you propose we go forward, given what you've heard us bannering about? I mean, it, it sounds as if you're you're looking to amend your inclusionary zoning bylaw, um, based on the fact that you want to address those first five units because they're not currently addressed in your inclusionary zoning bylaw. Um, so it's not necessarily addressing payment in lieu of with your current bylaw. Um, we're, we're, yeah, we want to address the first five units or even the first unit, assuming a certain dollar amount, okay? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, and I think that there, there are opportunities and there are examples that you can draw upon that, you know, may be helpful for Hadley, but it would be the, it would be a different approach than we're currently moving, which was to establish a calculation as a regulation, right? Um, because you currently have a bylaw that does not have a regulation in which a calculation would be there for a prospective developer at the moment. Um, if you're to address inclusionary zoning and inclusionary, yeah, the affordable housing component for those first five units, that is a, a bylaw change which would require town meeting. Um, right. And so, the, you know, that's, that's a bigger haul, um, which is fine, but it also, you know, there's probably going to be quite a bit of, you know, educating on on that bit with both the board and, and the town, um, you know, who may or may not like that approach. What we need to do now is get this payment in lieu for the six or more units firmed up and then go back and talk about the, the one through five units. Right. So that we can at least have some something in the regulations in, Right. In case a state build doesn't go through. Assuming it, it well, doesn't, we need to have something in place, right? We need to have something in place for the right. six or more unit because that's what we have in front of us. Right. The state, this, this, this state fee, if it comes in, we can always rescind our regulations and otherwise, if we decide that that's what's appropriate. But if we start saying, well, the state's going to come through with this fee, well, that's like, that's awfully wishful thinking. Who knows if that'll ever happen? Right. I mean, it could happen 
in the next, the next session, it could have could not happen ever. I think there's a lot of pressure in Boston. Yeah, for for it not to happen, and I'm no, not talking. Really. Yeah. So we we've got to address this, this the six and above payment in lieu, and it seems like this uh, Shrewsbury fee may be. I don't want to say the most reasonable, but maybe the most appropriate right now. And yeah, it's a significant fee, but they don't want to pay it. That's okay. Quit build the units. And, you know, I think the way that I had drafted um, the, the, that regulation, if you recall, and I'm just going to quickly... Bill, can you let me share screen? Sure. Let's see. Okay. There was um, this particular section that you asked me to look at that provides some flexibility. So, oh man, I don't know why I can't zoom in. I don't know if you can see that. I can't zoom in for whatever reason. But this this area in blue. Oh. Yikes. Or you could zoom in too much. I know, right? <laughs> um, this area down that's number three. Oh gosh. I have no control over the, my mouse. It's a little delayed reaction. Yeah. Um, suggests that the applicant can can submit a proposed schedule of affordable purchase prices. So the planning board can take it at the value that the applicant may suggest based on, you know, their own calculation. Um, so that provides some flexibility there for them to come to you. The thing, the thing is, they're probably going to want to do that, I would imagine. Um, if they think that 180,000 that they're spending on other units um, is too much to, for yeah. a, a um, you know an inclusionary zoning unit, just go along that line though. What, what I'm, I think we want want to try to do is get away from a negotiation between a developer and the planning board. Sure. This, Oops. So yeah, I don't know if the board wanted to, you know, take another look at what we had discussed last time. I didn't make any changes to it. Um, so what you got, I think, in October was the is the current version. Um, but it basically is the is the difference between the assessed median. Um, that the town assessor provides that 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 value minus the purchase price of an affordable unit that suggests this particular cost. So this maximum price, um, the difference of whatever the median price of or the average price rather of the single family units, that the that of which that value is provided by the assessor's office minus this maximum price would come you know whatever that difference is is the um, the cost is what you'd expect if they were not going to build on site. I, know, I think we've got to give something in there in case the developer really disagrees with it. They give them a give them an option to. I know Mike doesn't like it, but give them an option to negotiate 
well, you know, I can, this is what I'm finding. If they can prove it, then we should listen. But they're going to, it's going to be awfully hard to dispute the prices because So maybe uh, I'll just make a motion to, so we don't beat this to death. Uh, I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing to uh, Tuesday, December 21st. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we... I'll second. When is it? The 21st. Our second, uh, third, Tuesday, third Tuesday of December. That's my birthday. Oh. Is that Sagittarius? The cusp, Sagittarius oh. Cap Capricorn. Mm. Okay. We got a motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Passes unanimously, six to zero. Ken's like, let's be done with this tonight. <laughs> this has been a long meeting. My iPad power is on uh, low power. My iPad's on low power mode. Okay. We, got just, we got we got one or two. The uh, did you put on the agenda to talk at all, Bill? But we didn't put down Bill. Talk anything about the uh, split tax rate? We want to take any stand on that. I don't feel a need to take a stand on it. It's being talked about as a, um, a one-off. Okay. And yeah, okay. I didn't put it on. Um, anybody who wants to go to the meeting tomorrow night is welcome to go to the meeting. Okay. That's right. We did get, they want somebody to be on, what do they call it, Bill? It's a bylaw review bylaw By review committee and it is not just the zoning bylaws it's the entire package of bylaws the entire package um i will volunteer to be on that committee if nobody objects or nobody else wants it jacks <laughs> <laughs> i was going to nominate we start at the end of, of the alphabet <laughs> I was going to nominate Mark Dunn because I think that's a great way to learn uh, the bylaw. I'll be divorced before I'm married. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Jim, Jim just volunteered for him. what? It, when I got married, I served on three boards, and now I'm down to one. Yeah. I was gone a lot. I don't know, who came up with this idea that we have to review the bylaws? Uh, the town administrator. Why? Um, she apparently has been finding quirky little things that... Uh, well, I mean, for example, the uh, if, if your shrubbery on the uh, edge of your property is obscuring the view, Remember the big debate we had that, and it's a town bylaw, and I think it was presented by an attorney, and uh, nobody's enforcing it. So, so should we take those off the books? Maybe that's what the committee is going to discuss. Well, then, then you're creating a real nightmare. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll keep quiet. Move we adjourn the meeting then. No. <laughs> it's no. another ad hoc committee to drain the swamp. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we're increasing and you, and you know the rest of the saying of that one mark <laughs> <laughs> so okay we'll put jim down as uh that and uh, you know we'll just keep us posted we can take a look at some stuff i've i've found some stuff in some portions of the zoning bylaw that i'm scratching my head about 
and I was here when we adopted those. Whatever happened, Bill, uh, to the five people per house? Remember, we were limiting that. It was in our original bylaw, and I looked, it's not there now. Well, it's there in uh, the uh, no. uh, board, room and, room and board for four people, not to exceed four people. Okay. But it, it was never a, uh, I don't know anyone who's running a boarding house these days. We could get them to uh, contribute oh, it was, to the it affordable was, housing. It was unrelated people. And uh, well, okay, not, not on the agenda. I will stop. But okay. that's something. Neighbor asked me about it, about a student stuff for living next to him. So, um, so I did put on uh, a brief item about uh, support and assistance. Um, I've sent some things out. There's um, Peter Laurie. Some of you may know him. He had uh, a couple of kids that bracketed my kids in high school. Um, and he is providing some uh, clerical assistance and support to the Board of Health. Um, would be willing to take on some more time. Uh, he wasn't able to join us tonight. Um, I had uh, done up a very rough job description that I sent to HR about what we need help with. Um, legal notices, you know, getting notices out, getting decisions out scanning stuff the uh, uh real estate tax senior tax work off and as far as i know the veterans tax work off never produced anyone who was up to the task of scanning anything um so it's just uh something that um and that's also why i sent along that notice uh, about uh what waitley had done just trying to uh keep this sort of on the front burner that uh, you know, we do need to, uh, we need to. Could he do the notes, Bill? The minutes of our meetings? Uh, possibly. He could draft I mean, them that, up. That's something that mm -hmm. we yep. are drastically behind on. Right. And if he could do the minutes of the meetings and start catching up from whenever we're due, that would be the most important thing that we could use them for. We could use them for scanning and everything else, but the minutes are something that we really should yep. get caught up on. Agreed. And the, uh, you know, at the moment, the, with all of our files shoved into the uh, meeting room at town hall, uh, I think uh, uh, building inspectors use it, maybe using our scanner to do some of their plans. But um, otherwise, everything else is kind of inaccessible at the moment. So, um, but yes, I agree uh, completely. Getting the minutes done, you know, if, if just getting them, um, getting them into some rough machine readable form. So for editing would be a great help. Yeah. I think that's, I think we should, if we could, if he could do that, that would be, a big help to us. Agreed. We could draft them up for the secretary's or the clerk's review. Do we have a secretary or is it, is it a clerk? It's Mr. a clerk. Dwyer, uh, Mr. Dwyer is a clerk. Okay. Not a cleric. So we do have. Um money in our budget that can go towards that. Um, I'm not sure if ZBA also has some money. So this is basically trying to put together a job for someone. Um, there is uh, a new person who has taken Janice uh, Stone's seat in the uh, Conservation Commission. And at this point, I don't know how much time, extra time she would have available. I think She's brand new and she's probably kind of swamped catching up with um, with where the Conservation Commission is anyway. But it seems that, that there's a sort of a natural development team. E everybody needs help. 
ZBA, Planning Board, Conservation Commission, we're, and we're all doing basically the same thing or the same area. So uh, it would be, a, yeah, it's probably time. But- and, uh, and if that works out, Bill, is that something that we could request funding in the next fiscal year to support that? Uh, yes, I would suspect, well, we have money in our budget already. Mm. Um, we had some money that was being used towards Didi's assistance, but okay. the building department has been fully funded for her time now. So they don't need, uh, she's not drawing anything from us. She's not so, looking for overtime, no. So that in turn will, uh, well, it, it's a difficult question because um, uh, um, you need, they're trying to, anyway, they, overtime is an issue. Uh, getting someone in with, for enough time, but not too much time. Um, so, so will you look into this Peter Lori being able to do the minutes bill or do we have to do something? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk with, I, I will make sure that that is something he can do. Okay. Um, Okay. Anything else, Bill? I don't think I have anything else. I have nothing else. Anybody have anything? Everybody? Well, have a good Thanksgiving and a healthy Thanksgiving. And a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. And a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, John. And thank you, Tom. He signs off before I get him. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Thank you.